नमस्कार मैं हूं निवेदिता जम्मू कश्मीर पर अपना रोना धोना लेकर इमरान खान जहां जा रहे हैं उन्हें वहीं से लताड़ पड़ रही है बरसों से आतंक को खाद पानी देने वाला पाकिस्तान आज पूरी दुनिया में अलग थलग पड़ गया है कोई भी देश कश्मीर के मुद्दे पर उसका साथ देने को तैयार नहीं है तो वहीं यूएन यूरोपियन यूनियन और मुस्लिम देशों ने भी उन्हें इस मुद्दे से दूर रहने की हिदायत दी है इमरान जब भी कश्मीर पर मुंह खोलते हैं उन्हें भारी बेजती का सामना करना पड़ता है तमाम मंचों से मुंह की खाने के बाद मंगलवार को इमरान खान का दर्द छलक उठा उन्होंने कहा कि प्रधानमंत्री होना आसान बात नहीं है अगर उनकी जगह कोई और होता तो उसे हार्ट अटैक आ जाता दरअसल इमरान खान इन दिनों संयुक्त राष्ट्र महासभा के सत्र में हिस्सा लेने के लिए न्यूयॉर्क में हैं। इमरान यहां भी कश्मीर को लेकर भारत को घेरने की कोशिश में जुटे हैं लेकिन यहां भी उनकी बात सुनने को कोई तैयार नहीं है ऐसे में इमरान खान का ये दर्द काउंसिल ऑफ फॉरन रिलेशन अफेयर के कार्यक्रम के दौरान छलक उठा इमरान ने एक सवाल का जवाब देते हुए कहा की अफगानिस्तान ईरान पहले से ही उनके लिए परेशानी बने हुए हैं और अब भारत के साथ भी दिक्कत शुरू हो गई है इमरान ने कहा कि मैं क्या करूं? एक तरफ अफगानिस्तान की समस्या चल रही है ईरान की समस्या चल रही है और चीन भी चिढ़ा हुआ है दूसरी तरफ भारत के साथ भी दिक्कत शुरू हो गई है ऐसे में अगर आप मेरी जगह होते तो आपको भी हार्ट अटैक आ जाता इमरान ने आगे कहा पाकिस्तान के सामने इतनी गंभीर चुनौतियां हैं की मैं परेशान रहता हूँ ये तो क्रिकेट खेलने के दौरान सीखे गए मुश्किल और कड़ी मेहनत के तौर तरीकों की वजह से मैं ठीक ठाक हूँ खेल के दौरान मिली सीख से ही संभव हो सका है कि मैं दृढ़ता पूर्वक इन चुनौतियों का सामना करने और इनसे निपटने की कोशिश कर रहा हूं। इमरान खान की इन बातों से साफ हो जाता है कि वो जो भी करना चाहते हैं उसे कर नहीं पाते उन पर किसी का दबाव रहता है दरअसल बात बात में इमरान उस वक्त अपनी बेचारगी दिखा गए जब उन्होंने कहा कि कुछ मामलों को निपटाने के लिए उनके पास चीन के शासकों की तरह पावर नहीं है चीन ने जिस तरह से अपने देश के करोड़ों नागरिकों को गरीबी से निकाला है अगर उनके पास भी इतनी शक्ति होती तो वो पाकिस्तान से गरीबी और भ्रष्टाचार को खत्म कर देते आपको बता दें कि पाकिस्तान पिछले डेढ़ महीने से कश्मीर को लेकर मारा मारा घूम रहा है यही नहीं पाक की आर्थिक हालत भी किसी से छिपी नहीं है पाकिस्तान के लोग गरीबी और महंगाई से बुरी तरह परेशान हैं और अब तो एफएटीएफ ने भी उसे बैन करने की तैयारी कर ली है अंतर्राष्ट्रीय मंच पर कोई उसकी मदद को तैयार नहीं है I look forward uh, Mr President to talk to you about obviously Afghanistan which is uh, uh, a big issue for us Pakistanis because uh, stability in Afghanistan means stability in Pakistan we also want to talk about uh, all three neighbors Afghanistan uh, India Kashmir and of course uh, Iran uh, it's a uh, just we, we will discuss the situation there because all these all three neighbors of Pakistan and He as lives a, in a very friendly neighborhood <laughs> i mean as if there are not already enough challenges you know yeah. <coughs> mr president after your last meeting with the prime minister also to mediate between india and pakistan over kashmir and since then the situation has got even more complicated and india continues to deny our accept any mediation So where do you have to stand now? And don't you think it would always stand? Right? If I can help, uh, I would certainly do that. <coughs> and uh, it will be dependent on both of these gentlemen. Uh, one without the other doesn't work. If you're going to do mediation or if you're going to do an arbitration, but certainly I would be willing to help if both wanted, if both Pakistan, let's say, and India wanted me to do that. I am ready, willing, and able. It's a complex issue. It's been going on for a long time. But if uh, if both wanted it i would be ready to do it no so sir so mr president but all the thing is regarding that to my question the order of this on that me yes you know the thing is you are asking both the parties to accept and agree one is aggressor violator of the un resolutions and plus non compliance plus in, you know merging kashmir into its own territory is the kind of reporter i like i like this reporter <laughs> now, you are you are you a member of this team or are you a, <laughs> i'm not a member of this team i'm a 
don't want to be you say, you say no, what you think. Let me be my question. No, but I have to be how, requested. How can, how can you make an aggressor and an aggressor okay. meet and the I violation understand. of the UN resolutions? Very fair Thank question you. or statement. I'll, let me put that one down as a statement if you don't mind. Uh, but you're right. You have to have a, uh, you have to have two parties that want to agree. And if they, when they come, and, and at some point India may come, I have a very good relationship with Prime Minister Modi. I have a very good relationship with Prime Minister Khan. And if at any time they say, you know, we have some points that we think we can maybe iron out, I think I'd be an extremely good arbitrator. I've done it before, believe it or not, and I've never failed as an arbitrator. I've been asked to arbitrate disputes, pretty big ones, from friends. And I've done it in a good, successful fashion. If, uh, if I can be of help, you know that. If I can be of help, let me know. But you'd have to have the assent also from the other side. Uh, Mr. President, Mr. President, this is, uh, Mr. President, this is, uh, Mr. President, this is, uh, Mr. President. Mr. President. Mr. Johnson has now called for a new deal, just a moment for a new Iran deal. This is the first time he's called for that. I wonder what your reaction to it, and have you discussed that with him? Well, I think that's why he's a winner. That's why he's a man that's going to be successful in the U.K., and I think that's great. You're talking about Boris, yes, right? Yes, uh, Boris. is a man who, uh, number one, he's a friend of mine, and number two, he's very smart, very tough. And he does want a new deal, because the other deal was ready to expire. It was at a very short number of years left. All that money paid and wasted. Uh, you didn't uh, have the right to inspect the appropriate sites. You were looking at sites that would never be used to create nuclear. And the, the sites that they would use, we weren't allowed to inspect. What kind of a deal is that? And ballistic missiles. They're allowed to test ballistic missiles and other things. But one of the biggest things is the fact that the, the agreement is going to expire in a very short number of years. And what kind of a deal is that? We're dealing with countries. You have to go long term. So uh, I respect Boris a lot, and I am not at all surprised that he was the first one to come out and say that. Mr. President, this is the first time. Mr. President, this is the first time. This is the first time. Uh, this is the first time. So this is Jazeb Ali from Air Wayne of Pakistan. So this is the first time we get honest leadership like you in America. And uh, in past, I agree with that. This yeah, is the uh, first time you've had so in past, in, in past, you've had a lot of dishonesty. In, yeah. They've treated Pakistan very badly. So, so in past, people in my position have treated Pakistan very badly. So in past, in past, I think okay. that uh, I wouldn't say Pakistan has treated us too well either. But maybe there was a reason. And in fact, I think there was a reason for it. So in past, you have said that you don't trust Pakistan. So when we have honest leadership, I trust he, Pakistan, but people so. before me didn't, but they didn't know what they were doing. So it's just one of those little problems in life. Yes, you, know, I have, I, you know what I do? I trust this gentleman right here, and I do trust Pakistan. I know I have a lot of Pakistani friends living in New York. They're smart, great negotiators, by the way, in case you had any questions. They're among the toughest negotiators <coughs> in the world. So, so you are bringing people. And you know what? It's all going to work out. But if I can help, I'd like to help. But I don't think you've ever had a president that felt the way I do, in a positive way, about Pakistan. I don't think you have. I've looked back, and I've seen where it was. And, and, but I also have a very good relationship with India. I have a good relationship with both. So that if, if they decide to use that feeling among both, I think we can help out. But this has been a long standing. This has been going on for a long time. So you're. Mr. President, yes, you shared the stage with PM Modi. He alleged that Pakistan is the hub of terrorism. Do you endorse that or do you disagree with that? Because you said that Pakistan has made a lot of terrorism. Well, progress. I really have been pointing much more to Iran. I mean, Iran, if you look at what, that's been really the state of terror. And I've been saying it's the number one state of terror in the world. And the agreement we had does not cover that. It was not doing well. It was doing very poorly. And now Iran is doing very poorly. Iran is uh, a different place than when I took over. When I took over the United States, when I became president, Iran was a real threat to the entire Middle East and maybe beyond. And now uh, they're having very, very big difficulties, to put it mildly. So I, we'll see. Are you happy with the progress that Pakistan has made countering terrorism? Particularly areas I've heard areas. they've made great progress, and under this leader, he's a great leader, I think he wants to make great progress, because there's, there's no solution the other way. The other way is only going to lead to death and chaos and poverty. It's all it's going to lead to, and he understands it. The Prime Minister understands it. Are you concerned about the human rights situation in Kashmir? About which? Human rights situation. Human rights sure, I, I'd like to see everything work out. I want it to be and humane. I want everybody to be treated well. 
You have two big countries, and they're warring countries, and they've been fighting. And I mean, I heard a very aggressive statement yesterday. I don't have to say that. I was, I was there. I didn't know I was going to hear that statement, I had said. But I was sitting there, and I heard a very aggressive statement yesterday from India, from the Prime Minister. And uh, I will say it was very well received within the rule, you know, within the room, the, the statement itself. That was a big room. There were 59,000 people. Uh, but it was a very aggressive statement, and I hope that they're going to be able to come together, India and Pakistan, and do something that's really smart and good for both. And I'm sure there can be — there's always a solution. And I, I really believe there's a solution to this. Mr. President, you've asked one already. Go ahead. Quick, Mr. Quickly, Mr. make Mr. one second. Okay. Statement. Now, if Go you, ahead, you can solve this outstanding if. issue of Kashmir, yeah. very likely and definitely you will be deserving a Nobel Prize. On that, I think he's Nobel, Nobel Prize. Prize How about that, Mr. President? Mr. President, Mr. President. Mr. President. they're going to get a Nobel Prize for a lot of things if they gave it up fairly, which they don't. Mr. President, they gave, it Mr. President. Well, they gave one to Obama immediately upon his ascent to the presidency, and he had no idea why he got it. And you know what? That was the only thing I agreed with him on. <laughs> Mr. President! Mr. President! Mr. President! Mr. President. Mr. President. And India. Yeah, right, come on. Other than Pakistan and India, the Kashmiri people are suffering last 15 days. They will talk later on, but right now there was human rights violation in Kashmir. 50 days lockdown, no internet, no food, no nothing. So, you know, what, what do you want to do for Kashmiri people? Where do you find reporters like this? <laughs>